Yesterday we talked about conditions and using conditions to make decisions using the if statement and the else and else if and what have you. Today we are going to apply that information to our person class in the form of validation. We are going to validate the parameters to our constructor and the to say hello methods. Validation is extremely important because you want to make sure that the information that you are getting is valid. Because let's say, for example, this say hello method that accepts a person object, we could pass null to this method and that would be fine as far as the compiler is concerned because null is an object or it's a null object and person is an object so you can pass null for person. But whenever our code executes, it's going to try to get a first name property and a null object does not have a first name property. So our code is going to fail. That's not something that we want, especially if something mission critical is happening with the data that we are expecting. We could be writing to a database or writing to a file on the file system. We don't want that to catastrophically fail. We want to validate the information and then let whoever's using our class know that you know, they provided improper val or improper data, and then we'll just gracefully fail. We won't do anything with that data, and it's up to the developer to fix the problem on their end. So validation, at least what we are going to do today, is very simple because our data needs are very simple. And naturally, the more complex your data needs are, the more complex your validation is going to be. So we're not going to do anything with regular expressions, which um, are a language all in themselves. Uh, Jeffrey Way has actually done a course on regular expressions that you might want to check out if you want to get into regular expressions because they are very powerful but they are extremely cryptic and I am horrible with them so I'm staying away from regular expressions completely. So let's get started with something easy and let's first start with this say hello method with the person object. As I said if person is null then our code is going to fail so all we have to do is make sure that person is not null. Now, our condition is comparing person to null, and if that's true, then we are going to do something called throwing an exception. We haven't talked about exceptions yet, and that's fine because we are going to talk about them later in the course. But exceptions are basically errors, and we have many exceptions that we can choose from, and we can also write our own exceptions. They are classes, and of course we create objects from those classes. And whenever we throw an exception, we are essentially creating an exception. But it's not an exception that we have to fix. It's an exception that a developer has to fix. So let's look at what we have to do in order to throw an exception. And hopefully this will be clear to you. We have a keyword called throw. Pretty simple. And then we want to throw an object. And in the case of our exception, we want to throw an exception object. Now we do have a class called exception, and that is just a generic exception that is perfectly fine to use, but we have some more specific exception classes at our disposal. And one of those is uh, invalid or argument, argument exception, argument null exception. That's what we want because that adequately describes what is wrong here. Uh, we have gotten a null value for our argument, so we want to throw an argument null exception. And then we could just, you know, complete the constructor without passing any information, but we can pass a string contain, containing a message that would be helpful to the developer that's using our class. So we could do person cannot be null. And that's all that we have to do. We have now properly validated the person object. And when this code executes on line 28, throwing that exception, that halts code execution. So whenever someone is using our class, they pass null to say hello, they will get this exception, and this code on line 31 will not execute. 
So we have essentially saved ourselves, saved our code from doing anything dangerous. And that's exactly what we want to do. The problem here on line 28 isn't our problem. It's the problem that the developer has by passing invalid data to the say hello method. And that's something that they have to fix. So we've done everything that we are supposed to do by validating the information and then doing something uh, with that information if it is valid. Next, let's validate the name parameter in our other say hello method. Strings are a little different because we can contain a variety of information within a string. A string can be null, it can be empty, it can be white space, or it can have text. And really the only thing that we care about is text because with text we can say hello to anything that is specified by text. We might be considered crazy for doing that, such as, you know, hello coffee machine. But um, at least that is valid data. The other forms, the null, the empty, or the white space are not valid. So we want to check for null, empty, or white space. And this is really easy to do because we actually have two methods of the string class to determine if a string is null, empty, or white space. So we would do if, and then string dot is null or empty. We will pass a name, and this method will return true if name is null or empty. We have another method, string dot is null or white space. Kind of the same thing, except for empty, it checks for white space. Now, we are checking for null twice, but, you know, that's fine. That's not going to be a really big deal as far as performance is concerned. And th the ease of writing this code just kind of trumps everything else. Okay, so if string is null or empty, or it is null or white space, then we want to throw a new exception. And we don't necessarily want to use this argument null exception because that implies that even if the string contained empty or white space, it implies that it's still null, and that is not technically true. So we have another exception type called argument exception. And this is more generic. So we could have used the argument exception down with our other say hello method, but uh, the argument null exception was uh, quite fitting there. So this argument exception can be used generically, and that's exactly what we are doing. And we will say name cannot be null, empty, or white space. And that's a little long, so let's put this on two lines, make that a little bit easier to read. At least we don't have to horizontally scroll, which I absolutely hate. And once again, if this code executes, all code execution is going to stop. So as far as our code is concerned, we've done what we've needed to do. We've made sure that the name value is containing valid information. And then if not, then we are stopping the code execution and the developer needs to fix their code. The last thing we will validate is the constructor, the first name and the last name. Now we are going to have different criteria for these two parameters because the default for last name is an empty string. So we are going to have to adjust for that, but it's really not that big of a deal. So the first thing we want to validate is first name. And kind of like the name for say hello, we don't want a first name to be null empty or white space. So let's just copy and paste the code that we did for the uh, say hello method. We will change name to first name. And there we go. We have validated the first name. So first name cannot be null, empty, or white space. Now let's validate the last name. And last name can be empty because that is the default value. So we just want to make sure that last name is not null or white space. So we will use the is null or white space. We will pass last name. And if this is true, we will throw a new argument exception. And we will say last name cannot be null or white space. 
As I said earlier, if you have simple data requirements, your validation is going to be simple, and this proves that. We are done with our validation, so let's actually test out this validation. Let's create a person object. We'll pass null for the first name, null for the last name. Let's also do say hello. Let's pass an empty string. Let's pass a string with just white space, and then let's pass null. Now, I anticipate we are actually going to get a regged squiggly here. And we do. And this is because this is an ambiguous call. String and person can both be null because they are both objects. We can pass null to either of those values. And since we've done that here, it doesn't really know which of those overloads to call. So we're kind of protected there, but we still want to keep the validation that we have written just to make sure. So we can get rid of this call because our code isn't going to compile with that anyway. So let's go ahead and run this and we will see an exception. We see unhandled exception system.argument exception first name cannot be null empty or white space yeah that's pretty good so let's change null to string.empty run it run it again and we get the same thing uh, first name cannot be null empty or white space and just for completeness let's do white space it can be a single space doesn't matter first name cannot be null empty or white space now notice that through all the rest of this text, we don't see any other type of exceptions. And that's because the code has stopped executing because this first exception got thrown. Okay, so let's actually give a first name value. And let's leave last name as null. We should still get an exception because last name cannot be null or white space. And let's go ahead and test the white space of that. And by the way, this is not test-driven development. If you've heard that phrase before, uh, TDD is test-driven development. This is not TDD whatsoever. TDD is a completely different topic that would basically have its own course. So that might be something for a later course. But even though we are testing each of these pieces, uh, this is not TDD whatsoever. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's test... <laughs> Let's test this, and uh, we will get to last name cannot be null or white space. Perfect. So let's get rid of that. Let's use the default value, and this should start testing the say hello method. And last name cannot be null or white space. Really? That's interesting. Let's look at our code. Maybe I wrote the wrong method. Nope. Is null or white space? Last name is not used in any other string, so this has got to be it. For some reason, is null or white space is returning true for an empty string. Now, I know an empty string is not null, so it has to be consider considering it to be white space. Wow. I learned something new today. Okay, so we um, today is a good day. Uh, we need to change this. Uh, the test for null is obviously easy, so we do that. Uh, or for the white space, we can do a trim. That will trim all of the white space from the beginning and the end. So if the whole thing is white space, then we would actually end up with an empty string. Actually, let's do this. But... If we have an empty string in last name, trim is going to give us an empty string, so we still need to check to make sure that last name is not an empty string. So we will do last name is not string.empty. And let's put this on another line. So just to recheck our logic, if last name is equal to null, or if last name.trim is an empty string, and last name is not an empty string, then return true or execute this throwing of the exception. That should work. So let's go ahead and run that. 
And there we go. Name cannot be null. So perfect. We did a better job of validation. I wonder if that's a bug. Uh, that might be something worth noting because uh, I'll have to test it on my own. White space or an empty string should not be white space. And a regular expression would tell me that. And I'm horrible with regular expressions, but that'll be easy to test. Okay, so um, that's going to be a bug. That, that's got to be a bug. Either that or I learned something new. Either way, I'm happy. So, Okay, so uh, this first one changed. So let's add in an actual string value there, or at least text. And then let's test the white space. And we get the exception there as well. So if we change this to a value, then our code should run without any problem whatsoever. So there we go. We have added validation to our person class using conditions and if statements. So we have used the information from last lesson and made our class a little bit more robust and a little more secure as far as our end is concerned. Um, our code is not going to fail, unless if we write bad validation code. Uh, our code is not going to fail. It's going to be somebody else's that will cause uh, anything to throw an exception within our class. So today is a good day. I learned something new, and hopefully you learned something new as well. And we have a better person class because of it. So tomorrow we will start looking at loops and we will continue to look at conditions because conditions are an integral part of loops. So we will get started with that tomorrow. Have a great day.